Hey guys, well, a topic that has come up quite often is the issue of expat health insurance. And, um, you know, what I did was I went ahead and, uh, you know, started talking with Michael Onstead, who's going to join us here in just a second. And he's, he's an actual agent uh, up there in Luzon. And so we're going to go ahead and do like a Q&A and get from him uh, information about expat health insurance. So let's go ahead and bring him on. Hey, Michael. Hey, how you doing? Great. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate Yay. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I appreciate that you're willing to share some information. Uh, now, you're you're an agent with uh, which company? Uh, Pacific Cross. Pacific Cross. Okay. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's come up a lot. But I, but I, do I do business with a couple of others as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, um, I guess the first question that, you know, or the question that gets asked the most often is how much? Now, is the premium priced uh, on your age and your medical condition, or is it more of a a tier system, a flat fee? How, how does the pricing work out? Well, putting it simply, the older you are, the more you pay. <laughs> and. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, health health uh, health condition does have a bearing on it, but only mm. after the first year. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, because pre-existing conditions are not covered in the first year. That's just that a standard. And anyone that tells you otherwise, well, mm. they're not telling you the goods. Ah, so like say a guy, uh, an expat you know, moves in the Philippines, wants to make sure that he's covered medically. Uh, and, but let's say he's on dialysis, uh, that first year he would have to do out of pocket. And then the, the beginning of the second year is when the, the medical insurance would kick in. Uh, well, yes. And with that kind of condition, there'd be a premium loading. With that, with that oh, exception. okay. So they have to, when you apply, I'm guessing you have to be a bit forthright about what what kind of conditions you already have, right? Very important. Okay. Now um, I know you you know again it's it varies on age, but uh, let's just go with like you know Joe expat. You know we'll just create a guy who is let's just say sixty two. You know that's usually when most guys retire and start thinking, hey, I, I got a right. I got a pension. I'm going to the Philippines. So let's say he's 62, uh, you know, decent health, no preconditions. Um, and like you said, whether he smokes or not is not a big deal. So for a guy that's 62 in decent health, eh, ballpark, what, what, kind of, what kind of premium is he looking at per year? There's two kinds of plans. There's a peso plan, mm -hmm. and then there's the U.S. dollar plan. Hmm. A 62-year-old uh, would be looking at about 14,000 pesos a year for a minimum amount of coverage of 500,000 pesos. Okay. So that's 14,000. I'm bad at math in my head, but that's roughly about $300 a year, U.S. dollars? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. Okay. And now what, what is the difference between the peso plan and the U.S. dollar plan? The U.S. dollar plan has much higher limits. Uh, that the, the limits start at half a million U.S. Hmm. So that's uh, what is that in pesos? Uh, Twenty-five million pesos. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, and that would run a guy at that age about um, uh, maybe fourteen hundred U.S. a year. Oh, okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, uh, really. But but, but that's oh, that's okay, based but. on a deductible. <laughs> A deductible of twenty five hundred. Deductible twenty five hundred. Okay, and and I usually advise guys to have either a credit card, you know, that doesn't carry a balance, just an empty credit card, uh, you know, preferably without with about you know say five thousand on it or something, uh, and and that way when you do go to the hospital, you know, before all the paperwork starts with the insurance and who they're going to bill and all that. You know, I usually suggest to have a credit card, you know, that you can present to the hospital that way, because then, then they know they're going to get paid, at least, you know, your, your upfront or your out-of-pocket yeah. expenses. Um, so that's a good idea, even even with, you know, with or without 
health insurance. Now, by comparison, you mentioned that was about fourteen hundred for the whole year, the twelve months. Yes. Okay. Now, for instance, I have Kaiser here in United States for the time that I'm here right now, and I'm paying about six hundred and fifty-two dollars per month. So for just roughly two and a half months of coverage in the United States, a guy can have a whole year's worth of coverage there in the Philippines using the, the dollar uh, plan. Does that sound about right? Yes. That okay. sounds about right. And, uh, and I got to mention the Kaiser plan is a reimbursement plan. Yeah. Uh, the Pacific Cross plan is a direct settlement plan. So Pacific mm. Cross pays the bill directly. You don't have to dig into your credit card or uh, except to the extent of the deductible right, uh, right. Uh, yeah now my my just to hopefully nobody gets confused uh i'm currently in california so i'm using my kaiser plan here in california does kaiser or do you represent is does kaiser have a plan that is effective in the philippines or no uh, kaiser is effective in the philippines any inter international plans effective but they're all reimbursement. Oh. oh, so you have to pay out front. Yeah. You have to pay. You have to put the whole thing in your credit card and then you make claim directly to the company and you wait a month or two to get your money back. Oh, OK. But with Pacific Cross, they they direct pay directly. Card. Right. OK, front. well, see, that, that's a huge yeah. bonus. That's, that's a big yeah. advantage. Yeah. 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 Because, uh, you know, again, the. I don't know, sort of the unspoken thing over the years that I've noticed is that every, well, no, I won't say every, but, you know, many expats, myself included, our focus was, oh, get to the Philippines, start dating, start traveling, what's there to do? And health insurance just kind of goes off in the background, um, you know, because maybe the insurance that they left from UK, Canada, wherever, isn't even applicable in, in a foreign land. And it just kind of gets dropped off in the background until the day you have a heart attack or something major, uh, or because or somebody or somebody close to you has something major happen. That that happens a lot. Yeah, they they will they it's against the law, but they will lock you up in the hospital until you're paid. Yeah, I hear stories yeah, uh, about that constantly. Oh yeah, I did a in fact maybe I'll put a link to this video uh, there in the description and stuff. But yeah. Uh, they can hold you and now they will let you go either if you pay off the bill or they will say, bring a title to a property. It may belong to whoever. Uh, of course, it'll be a Filipino, maybe your wife or whoever. And they will want you to put the title up for collateral to make sure that you come back and pay. Uh, right. So they're pretty serious about it. The secu you know, they have they security are. guards at Jollibee and everywhere else, but the security guards yeah. at the hospital, it, it's not to keep people from getting in. It's to keep people from leaving without paying, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's a definite issue. Now, uh, I will say that the expats I've talked to who got, like, say, one buddy of mine, he got actually hit by a tricycle there in Dumaguete, and ended up with like a broken finger and a broken arm and a broken leg. Now, to get his bones cast and come back, take off the cast and, you know, the whole ball of wax, uh, he got in and out of that for like under 500 bucks easy. So a lot of the, the, the everyday type of things, most expats will pay out of pocket. They'll have, say, yeah. some savings, you know, a couple thousand, whatever. Yeah. And, and like another buddy of mine, his wife had a baby, I believe it was there on Behold. Now, this was back in 2013, so I'm sure prices have changed. But um, uh, again, it was it was not an amount that he couldn't just pay out of pocket. You know, we're talking about like less than $3,000. And that was to have a baby, you know. So, um, and most guys, I think, approach or, or rationalize not having health insurance by saying to themselves, well, it's pretty cheap. X-rays are only twelve dollars, and diagnostics are usually, you know, ten bucks. And most of, most of the time, that does it. that does it. And and the sad reality is that the GoFundMe approach for valid guys who have a real issue has been abused by scammers 
who yeah. use that as a way to get money. And, yeah. and they've been found out. There's been a few in the expat community that have been found out to be just liars saying that they were, you know, dying of whatever. And, and then next thing you know, it's like four years later, they're not, they're not dead. They're still here. You know, supposedly they had a year to live and here they are still asking for money four years later. So, um, so yeah, so the whole, the whole idea of, of expat health insurance, a lot of us put it off to the side and then, and then all of a sudden you get diagnosed with cancer or even just a, a skin lesion that needs to be lasered or, or eye surgery or something beyond the usual dental and all that, which leads me to um, these, uh, like for instance, the medical plan that you offer through Pacific Cross, um, do you get dental and optometry separate or is it all included? How does that work? It, no, that's, uh, that's separate and most expats pay as you go for that kind of thing. Uh, really what they're looking for is catastrophic. Mm. You know, the okay. things that they can't handle with their credit card. Like uh, yeah. a dengue fever hits a few of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen uh, older guys, when they get food poisoning, it's not just a little diarrhea. You can go to the hospital for a month on an IV drip uh, with a bad case of food poisoning. Um, yeah. You know, there's other things. Uh, uh, getting hit uh, or driving your, your, your moped around and getting hit and, and your leg gets crushed. Uh, that can be mm -hmm. uh, a month or two in the hospital and a lot of rehab. Yeah. Now I, I have a buddy that uh, I felt so bad for him. It was like only, it was one of his first few trips to the Philippines and he went to Palawan, you know, ate some bad ceviche or something. But like you said, he didn't just have a little bit of food poisoning. I mean, he ended up in the hospital on an antibiotic drip for like four days, yeah. you know, right. now he's got, he has plenty of money. So he was able to pay out of pocket, but for a guy that's you know, uh, bought into this idea, oh, I can live in the Philippines for $700 a month and, you know, or 600 or 500 and they got no savings, no backup for an emergency, you know, a $2,000 or $3,000 medical bill, they got a real problem on their hands, right. you know, and it can happen. Yeah, that, kind of guy, that, that kind of guy can be happy with the peso plan and it's $300 a year. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, PhilHealth was about the same price. Now, the issue with yeah. PhilHealth is that, you know, because that's, again, been a, 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 like the first choice because it's in the malls and everything. It's easy to sign yeah, up but for. It's, it's, but, but you it's, can probably elaborate on this. The, the coverage is, is not comparable, right? Not, not, even, not, not even close. But, uh, you know, PhilHealth does, I mean, it's, it's good for the, for, for the local. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it, in a catastrophic uh, uh, claim, uh, you might get 20% subsidy from them. Yeah, because like with PhilHealth, I believe the it was something like the first two months you're not covered and then you're covered, something like that, or, or they go by quarters. I think it was quarters, something like that. Um, and again, you know, now it sounds like the peso account that you mentioned is, is about the same price of the premium I remember from a few years ago with PhilHealth. Right. Um, but something else that should be kept in mind, uh, if you, if a person goes to Google and does, you know, Phil health, um, you know, news, uh, especially last year before COVID was really dominating the headlines, uh, Phil health has actually been brought before Congress. There's been a lot of issues about non-payment hospitals, not getting paid. Um, yeah. the confidence in Phil health has really fallen a lot. To the point where the government is like again investigating and trying to. At one point, the government was thinking of actually taking over the private enterprise of PhilHealth, but I, I don't believe they ever did. Um, so yeah, so that's something to keep in mind before an expat just says, "Well, I'll just get the PhilHealth; it's inexpensive; that'll cover yeah. me." Um, but from what you're saying with uh, Pacific Cross. Uh, it, it, it's, it's much more coverage. It's about the same price with the peso, uh, deal. Yeah, and it pays a hundred, it pays a hundred percent of a catastrophic claim as opposed to a, a, a 20% subsidy. Yeah. And that, that makes all the difference, you know, again, cause it's again, you know, and, and who knows, I mean, you know, you, it, like for instance, dental and optometry, uh, uh, 
optometry. Um, like I've been in uh, both Vietnam and uh, Philippines and I wanted, you know, like custom reading glasses, you know, where they measure my eyes and, and make it specifically for the laptop and all that. And, right. um, and, and that you can pretty much pay out of pocket. You know, you're talking yeah. about 85 bucks at the most. In, in Vietnam, it was like 75, but it was, you know, very well done and all this. Um, and then dental, again, I, I've always paid out of pocket for dental. I think the biggest bill I ever got, you know, for doing some crowns was like 300 bucks, you know? Um, yeah. So now with, uh, now you've got, now the, the plans that you're talking about, let's say you've got an expat, he spends some of his time in the Philippines, you know, maybe later he bounces over to Thailand uh maybe he wants to go to cambodia or vietnam does that plan follow him or is it specific to the philippines the peso plan uh, will cover 30-day trips unlimited 30-day trips the mm -hmm. uh, u.s dollar plan will cover 90-day trips oh okay okay other than that you're planted in the philippines yes Okay. Now, do you have plans for guys? Because because a lot of the guys, you know, kind of drop in. They're living permanently in Thailand. Do you have plans for guys that are long term in Thailand? No, no. I no, specialize no. in the Philippines. Guys, guys that are living here or are based out of here. Oh, I, okay. I, uh, because yeah, I believe Cambodia. I mean, it's been about a year since I last looked at their requirements. But back when Cambodia's border was open, one of their requirements was you had to have health insurance, you know, in order to get in. Same with Thailand, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, so now Philippines, it's not a requirement, but it's good common sense. I'm, I'm, I'm working <laughs> on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, is there anything um, that you wanted to mention about, uh, like, say, for instance, uh, you have, do you have a, how can people contact you? Like, do you have a website or a Facebook page or? Uh, yeah, my Facebook people... page is, my Facebook page is Health Insurance in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Good name. Good name. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get all your contact info and I'll put it in the description and the pinned comment. And that way guys can easily, uh, you know, get a hold of you. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to share about uh, about just you know health and health, expat health insurance in general? I just recommend when, whenever you look at health insurance, look past the premium quoted. Uh, you got to read the fine print. And oh, another question is: uh, so far we've been talking about an expat getting you know health insurance for himself. Uh, is there a family plan so that it one premium covers you, your wife, and your kids? What I normally do is just bundle the peso plan into one package. If there's more than seven in the in, in the plan, then there's a five percent discount. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so if you don't have, you want the discount, just make more babies. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> or just adopt, adopt yeah. the neighbors. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> make a baby, save some money. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so altogether, then, uh, it, it sounds like, you know, again, a lot of guys don't even want to, it's kind of like doing your taxes. It's like, we don't even want to investigate it because it's going to cost yeah. some money. Yeah. The smart thing, it really is, it sounds much more affordable than we probably imagine in our head. You know, we're probably thinking about, you know, cost of health insurance back home. Right. which can be pretty outrageous. Like I said, you know, here in California, I'm paying uh, about 625 a month, um, which is about about seven grand or so a year. So, but it, it's a, it's, it's, it's the smart play to, to have that health insurance so that should the day come, you know, uh, you can go into the hospital and, and that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. The Pacific Cross plan comes with an access card. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so she can have that card in order to take care of that, right? Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Well, you know, um, thanks. I mean, that's a lot of good information and uh, really appreciate it. 
uh, again, I'll put your contact info there in the description and the pinned comment. Uh, guys can contact you. It's definitely sounds very affordable. Um, and and my, I guess my my sober thought on all this is a message to some guys who are you know in the Philippines on a micro budget um, would be really give some thought to doing this because a guy who has a large income, you know, say 3000 or more a month, he can usually float the medical bills. But if you're barely getting by, just squeaking by month to month in the Philippines, everything's hunky dory until the day you get hit by a tricycle crossing the street. So I would really say, you know, if, if you really want to avoid a big hairball in the future, g just bite the bullet and get the health insurance. Even the guy that has 3000 a month coming in, a, a real catastrophe can wipe out his savings. So that's a thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you know, there's the big ones, you know, that we mentioned, uh, cancer and heart issues. Um, and then surgeries, you know, uh, you know, you got to go in and, you know, when you need a pen, an appendicitis surgery, an appendix, that's like now. You can't put that off till next month. You got to do it now, <laughs> you know. So, uh, okay, well, thank you very much for... Yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to to come on in, and people My can pleasure. contact you. Yeah, and a very a very good thing that you know give you some peace of mind. You know, uh, when you're out uh, bungee jumping and leaping off of cliffs at Kawasan Falls, and you know all that kind or of stuff. Or riding a motorcycle in the Philippines. <laughs> oh yeah, riding a motorcycle. It. Oh God, I I just somebody sent me the other day. Again, it's the Philippines. You know, if there's a horrific motorcycle accident, it'll be on Facebook within 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, everybody will stand around you. You know, your 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 lungs are laying out on the road, and, it's, and nobody calls an ambulance, to... but they'll get you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You know, and oh, well. and I got I got one of those pictures the other day, and and I was just like, man, you know. Uh, you know, the roads in the Philippines, especially between the, the little two lane roads that are between, you know, small areas of town, like between uh, Dumaguete and Bacong or Dowin, uh, there's just so, I saw so many accidents. I even saw accidents happen right in front of me. And uh, it's, it's, that's when, that's when it gets real. You know, I mean, that's when it's like, you know, I see those accidents and I'm like, man, that dog could have run in front of my bike. You know, I saw the other guy flip his bike sideways three times from the dog he hit. Fortunately, he had all the protective gear. He, he, he walked it off. Yeah. But this other guy, uh, again, he, he wiped out right in front of us. And, uh, you know, I mean, literally like, like maybe five car lengths in front of us, um, just wiped out and and other buddies of mine you know they've seen filipinos come around a curve on the outside one of them out there in uh, bakong the guy the filipino guy went right into a bus i mean you know i've seen anybody who's lived in the philippines more than six months will end up probably seeing a horrific car accident you know out on the road so uh definitely definitely good idea oh another guy another friend of mine riding his motorcycle uh, one of the support cables for the telephone lines had broken and it was just laying on the road in a coil and it got wrapped up in the tire of his motorcycle. Now, fortunately, he came out of that okay. I mean, I have seen I have seen big bundles of bananas it, at night just laying in the road. And it sounds comical, but when you hit that with your motorcycle, you're gonna you're gonna flip oh, all over the place. Or even a big crab. I was out in Pang Lao riding my bike uh, out in the pure dark of the middle of the island one night, and there was this big giant crab, big as a dinner plate, crossing the road. And if I would have hit it, it would have just gone gooey and slid all over the place. So definitely, definitely, I, I, I hate to bring up these sort of horrific images, but I my point is having the health insurance is the smart thing to do, and it's affordable. Well, thank you very much, Michael, for coming in. And uh, you guys, we'll talk about something thank maybe you, more Rick. fun. Yeah. Yeah.
next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye -bye. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, uh, be sure to subscribe and get notifications for new stuff. Also, check out my community tab where you can get updated news on stuff going on in Southeast Asia. All right. Catch you later. Bye-bye.